Um, as you know, uh, in the past, um, the Heights has included, uh, um, you know, a lot of commerce. We had Mirabella Seafood, Tampa Sand and Gravel. Um, previously, in the historic building, the uh, Tampa Electric Streetcar Company, which, uh, as we all know, eventually became Tico. Um, and uh, that building uh, transitioned to being Tampa Armature Works um, after the war, uh, which today is still one of Tampa's uh, largest private companies run by Bubba Turner and his family. Um, the uh, last resident in the Community Development District passed away in 2015, Julia Jackson. And uh, is Julia's son here? I don't, Eugene. So, oh, hey. Is Eugene coming? So, as part of the uh, um, time capsule event, we wanted to uh, include something from her family. Um, Julia had uh, uh, four kids that she raised here in the community. And uh, they, in turn, gave her 18 grandchildren, I believe, at last count. And uh, with the new great-grandbaby she had this year, I believe she's up to 19 great-grandchildren. She was an uh, educator um, who, I think, first uh, worked in a segregated school system and subsequently um, at Brandon High School. Um, through working on this uh, project, I've actually run into several people who are students and um, you know, I think it's a, a cool story. As we move forward with building the first new residential here, um, we felt like it was uh, cool to honor her. Um, our vision for the area is to bring that vibrancy back, you know, to make a place where somebody can, again, raise a family, um, to make a place conducive to, uh, you know, to, to that type of uh, commerce. I mean, I think we're looking at a new, uh, a new type of commerce. But, um, again, to, uh, to bring that back to the heights. Um, we really appreciate, and I, I see some of the folks here from the neighborhood. Um, Chloe's here representing Kathy Castor. Uh, Rick is here from the Tampa Heights neighborhood. And these folks have been um, uh, super helpful in, in getting us this far. Um, the process of reassembling the land here, um, purchasing the remaining parcels, started for us in 2011. 2012 in earnest, um, and uh, you know we've uh, um, uh, we're really uh, you know looking forward. I mean, we're we're pleased now that we have uh, tangible progress to show y'all. Um, the heights, when it uh, is complete, will be a two million square foot uh, master plan community. Um, today we're uh, putting a ground uh, time capsule in the ground, um, and uh, as part of that. Uh, I brought a couple contributions. Um, I'll put these on the table for everybody to look at. Um, we have a, uh, a railroad spike from the original Tampa Armature Works, which would date back to the 1905 to 1913 period in which the uh, building was constructed. Um, I have some uh, photographs of, uh, of how vital a place it was back in the day. And, uh, you know, we can see the, uh, the shipyard here. Camp Armature Works in the background. Um, here's a view further out where we can see uh, Mirabella Seafood, Tampa Sand and Gravel, the intensive uh, um, occupancy here at the Tampa Armature Works, Hugh McFarland Shipyard, um, the old Tampa Water Works facility, which was the first water supply. Um, the Tampa Armature Works itself, including uh, the water tower, which we're working to uh, to replace. And then a couple of pictures which represent kind of the Blake Slate that we have now and uh, that we're all going to need to continue to work together to, uh, to, um, to fill in. So, uh, you know, it's an awesome opportunity. We really are a uh, um, proud little awestruck at the uh, responsibility that we have here. Um, so, you know, there it is. Beautiful, beautiful property. So 300 and uh, the Pearl represents a 314-unit apartment complex. 
um, we tried to strike a balance um, of urban density and intensity that would allow us to get the uh, you know the needed neighborhood serving commercial uses that are lacking here, um, and yet find a scale that works for the existing neighborhood along the north. Um, the southern buildings, which face uh, this way, will be seven story. Um, the uh, residences along the north street are uh, are four story, and all of them have front doors which address the street, front stoops. Um, the Pearl Block will include 44 on street parking spots and a pocket park, which we're standing in. Um, uh, you'll notice that the uh, that the side of Building Two aligns with the street grid downtown and. Uh, hopefully this park will be a, a place where, uh, you know, the next uh, wave of families that move here will be able to enjoy themselves. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce the mayor. Well, I don't really need to introduce him, but thank you for coming and uh, allow him to speak to you for a moment. Um, a key member of the mayor's team, uh, Bob McDonough, is here. And i got to say that, uh, you know, he does a great job for Mayor Buckhorn, and we really appreciate all the assistance that he's given us, him and his team, in getting this far. So good job, Mr. McDonough. Think about what we just experienced this past weekend, where the world saw a city that had transformed itself over the last five years, a city that the last time we hosted a Super Bowl didn't look like anything that we saw this weekend. And what the world saw this weekend was an amazing American city, that with a river walk that connected everything with the yacht village and the Jose Gasparilla that was lit up at night that became the money shot for millions and millions of people who watched it. And you think about all the people that had not visited Tampa in a number of years who walked away yesterday morning saying, wow, what an amazing place. This is a different place than it was the last time I was here. Now, I want you to join with me five years from now. And the next time that we host the Super Bowl or the next time that we host that college football championship and those very same people and thousands more like them get to come and experience what is about to occur on this particular site as that river walk has continued all the way to the North Boulevard Bridge, as Riverfront Park, a 23-acre park on the west side, has transformed itself into a destination, as people are living, working, and playing here in the Tampa Heights area, where the Tampa Armature Building is bustling with activities. Think about what they will say in five years when they come back and see an American city that has completely transformed itself. Chaz and Adam had the vision and believed in the capacity of this particular piece of property. Look at that view corridor. Look at what the folks who are going to live here are going to get up every morning and see. And then look that way when they see the sun set over the bridge. And think about what our city has become. It is becoming what we always aspired for it to be. But it takes investors. It takes developers with a vision. It takes a city government that's willing to work. And it takes all of us as Tampanians believing that our best chapter has yet to be written. This is one more chapter. Let's get it done, boys. Good job. Rick, apparently I'm not reading my schedule, sir. Would you say something for us? Wow. You know, I had some, I do have some things written down that I wanted to say, but what I wasn't figuring on this afternoon was a little bit of emotion figuring into the equation for me. Um, I'm Rick Fernandez. I'm the president of the Tampa Heights Civic Association. But more importantly, from my perspective as I stand here, I was born and raised in Tampa Heights. The home I grew up in is about a mile away from where we're standing. I uh, literally was born in Ybor City at the Centro Asturiano Hospital. So when I stand here and I look at what's happening in this community, it's hard for me to hold back a tear, quite honestly. Um, I'm thinking back to 2011-2012 when I first moved back into the neighborhood and at that time uh, Soho Capital was coming to our Civic Association meetings with a vision and a dream. They came with poster boards that weren't as well developed by far as the ones that we see here now. 
and they were sharing their vision with the community. They listened to us. We had concerns about things like sight lines and green space and elevations of buildings and what oak trees were going to go and which were going to stay. And they listened to us. Um, at no time did the community, did the neighborhood, at least to the extent that I was part of it and part of the discussion, at no time did we feel that this was a situation where a developer was hoisting its will upon the neighborhood. On the contrary, they wanted to be good neighbors. They wanted us to be part of the conversation, and they were sure that we were a part of the conversation from beginning to, well, we're not in the end here, but certainly from the beginning until what will be the end. So uh, what I want to say to uh, Adam and to Chaz and to the rest of the Soho Capital Group, thank you very much for that. You didn't necessarily have to do it that way, but you did, and it mattered. And... Uh, on behalf of the Civic Association and personally, I want to thank you for that. Uh, Representative Castor was unable to attend today, but uh, she has a uh, representative here, Chloe Coney, um, to speak on her behalf. And uh, w would you welcome Ms. Coney, please? Thank you, Adam. Chloe Coney, a woman that wear many hats. But before I thank you on behalf of uh, Congresswoman Castor, many of you may not know this, but in the 1950s, I'm telling my age, my parents bought a house on Spruce Street. And for many Christmas, we would get our Union 5 skates. Some of you don't remember those skates, okay? And we would cross that bridge there and come all the way here. And every Friday, my mother would come over to Mirabella and get fish, so we have fish and grits. So uh, 60 years later, I am excited to be here. Do you hear me, Adam? And so who grew to see this with my own eyes go up. So we want to say thank you. But on behalf of Congresswoman Castor, who's fighting a good fight in Washington, D.C., and she will be here so excited to say thank you. Uh, she's worked very closely with our mayor, Mayor Bob Buckhorn, making sure the Riverwalk get funding. And I know with this development here, you're going to use HUD's funding that she's always fighting for. So, again, we're going to see good use of that. She donated something really special. Let's hope in 2018 that this will mean something to our country. She deliberately waited and made sure she put that in my hand yesterday, a flag that was flown over the Capitol. And she wanted to make sure that goes into that time capsule. And 2018, some of us may not be here. I may be here, ma'am, spirit, okay? I want to make sure that that flag means something to America and we can all say God bless America. Thank you all for coming out. On behalf of Congresswoman Castle.